welcome to Lassam Athletics. My name is Lucas. This is Kite Surfing Progression Vlog, episode number six, another kite surfing session. Since I love filmmaking, I always try to capture and produce the greatest possible content. As much as I am learning the kite surfing, that much I'm also learning the whole motion picture cinema art. The footage which you're about to see in this video was filmed with the amazing GoPro Hero 8 Black action camera. And just to quickly add here, if you'd like to see my review of this particular camera, click the link here. And if you'd like to see the greatest accessory for this camera, that is in my opinion, also click the second link above. Alongside the GoPro Hero 8 Black action camera during this session, I've used a ND filter, that is the ND2 to ND1000 variable filter. In order for you to be able to use a filter on a GoPro camera, you have to use an adapter. The one which I've used gives me 52 millimeter thread and the filter which I have gives me 58 millimeter thread. So in order to connect them, I had to put in between 52 to 58 step up ring. And just to add here, the filter which I've used is just your normal, standard, fairly cheap, circular filter, which you would normally use with your uh, camera lens, for instance, mirrorless camera lens. how the whole setup looks like. Some of you may ask why would you need a filter and why would you want to put it on a GoPro camera? It's because of my filmmaking aspirations and for experimenting with the results. In essence, I wanted to see what quality footage I can capture with this camera using fixed manual exposure in a POV water sports environment. Technically speaking, we are putting the ND filter on a lens to darken an image and to set our exposure manually, that way achieving the most natural motion blur. So as you can see, it's sticking out quite a bit, creating an additional space between the lens itself and the surface of the filter of roughly around one and a half centimeters, which is equivalent to about half an inch. The question which came to my mind also is, how is this whole setup going to perform in a water? since it's not watertight. The GoPro Hero 8 Black is waterproof itself, but the adapter, step-up ring and filter are not watertight. So the water will go in between them. And how is that going to affect the footage? Well, this is something which we're gonna see in this video. So let's find out.
at this point in the video you see me losing my board and that's due to the mistake that I've made I allowed the front of the board the edge to go underneath the water and basically I tripped myself over I went one way and the board went the other way you see me having few attempts of retrieving the board using the body drag technique during this session the wind was coming from the west and it was very hard for me to get back upwind at this point my friends also spotted me disconnecting from my board so i knew they're gonna go after my board so i decided due to the water being quite cold roughly two degrees to head back towards the shore and you can actually see me using the kite and how long it takes me to get from that point of where i lost my board actually to the shore the settings that i've used during this session on my gopro hero camera were as followed resolution 2.7k at 120 frames per second in 16 by 9 aspect ratio my lens was set to wide since if I try to set it to super view on my GoPro Hero 8 Black, the camera will change my frames per second to 60. Since I want to keep it at 120 for that extra slow motion, then I leave my lens at wide. Shutter speed is set manually with the 180 rule, so it's set to 1 over 240 in accordance to the cinematic motion blur reinforcement guideline of doubling the shutter speed in regards to the frames per second that we are filming at. My ISO minimum is set to 100, my ISO maximum is set also to 100 and due to the above settings the EVA compensation by default is set to NA so not applicable, we're not allowed to change it. My white balance is set manually to 5500 kelvins since we are filming outdoors daylight and we are using ND filter. My color profile is set to flat and my uh, sharpness is set to medium. Also hyper smooth stabilization is set to on. Let's quickly touch on the hyper smooth stabilization with the filter on top of the lens. When I look at the footage I realize that it's a bit more shaky uh, compared to what I normally get with the stabilization set to boost and auto exposure. So I am used to the very smooth footage uh, with the boost settings on. So at this point I'm not sure if uh, the difference that I can distinguish is due to the stabilization settings being on versus boost or if it's the filter on top of the lens itself causing the decrease in stabilization regardless of the settings and I would rather go with the second version where the filter is affecting the stabilization. In any event, I can confirm that the hyper smooth stabilization will be affected with the filter on top of the lens. And that could be due to the fact that the GoPro camera uses the infinite focus lens, meaning it's focusing on everything what's in a frame. And now with a filter, we are adding motion blur, plus we are locking our exposure aka darkening an image by applying additional glass in front of the lens now let's remember the hyper smooth stabilization is a digital stabilization so all of the above factors can affect its performance that's being said i very much like the footage i got from this kite surfing session with an extra cinematic motion blur and I want certain level of movement, shakiness, and because of that action going on in my movie since that's the story I create. In the water, because of that space in between the filter 
and the lens I got the water droplets even though I tried the licking the lens technique since the water was penetrating that space leaving the residue on the inner side of the filter glass so I got additional water droplets on the GoPro Hero uh, lens itself the inner and outer surface of the glass of the filter so in essence extra droplets all over the place and on the other side that effect can add certain value and character to the final uh, character of the movie itself uh, so it has its place it has its grounds to be there but for sure not at all times since the whole filter setup isn't watertight you can see the water entering and exiting the space in between the filter and the lens and that is very easy to spot and visible in this footage During this session I've used the GoPro's bite mount and floaty and you can see that even though the exposure was set manually and fixed it has changed on few occasions. Uh, that's due to the ND filter being the variable ND filter with very smooth and easy to uh, turn light stop adjustment wheel. So it must have been me accidentally rubbing the edge of the filter on my wetsuit changing the adjustment of the light stop and potentially it was even the force from the waves hitting the surface of the lens. I was going to retrieve my board, but I wasn't able to do that. Once I got there in no time, I was reunited with my board since one of my friends delivered the board to me and I got back into the water and I was enjoying my session. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see that because at this point my GoPro Hero camera battery went flat and I just wasn't able to capture that footage for you. This was Kitesurfing Progression Vlog episode number 6. My name is Lucas. As always, remember, be inspired, be creative and be active. This is Lasom Athletics. I'll see you soon.